Hello, and welcome to today's iCentity Connect webinar. Um, I hope you're all doing really, really well. My name is Marianne Comparet. Um, for those who haven't been here before, I'm speaking from the International Society for Neglected Tropical Diseases. And it's our really greatest pleasure to welcome you all today um, for our meeting this afternoon. Uh, with, there's been a lot of talk in recent times about the new WHO roadmap and looking at health systems in a very uh, universal and integrated way. And uh, recently a paper came out looking specifically at integrating management of skin NTD. And uh, we thought uh, this would be a great opportunity uh, to welcome and uh, invite to join us for uh, these Connect series um, two doctors uh, who will be talking to us about um, first-hand direct experience of integrating the management of skin NTDs uh, in Benin and Ivory Coast. So I'd like first and foremost to give you a very, very warm welcome. Uh, Dr. Yves Barogui, you're joining us today from Benin. You uh, actually have many roles. Uh, on the one hand, uh, working as a clinician, uh, also heading the Bruli Ulcer Detection Center with the Ministry of Health in Benin, and also uh, working in, as a researcher, a very prolific researcher, may I say, and a lecturer as well at the University of Abome Kalavi. Uh, so a very warm welcome to you, Dr. Barogi. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, also joining us from the Ivory Coast, it's our absolutely great pleasure to welcome Dr. Abu Apol Kofi. Um, good afternoon, Dr. Kofi. <laughs> OK, on t'entend. Oui, on vous entend très bien. Bienvenue. Merci. Uh, je passe à l'anglais maintenant, malheureusement. On repasse à l'anglais. <laughs> Um, sorry about that, everyone. We can't can't help ourselves to speak French uh, between fran francophone speakers. Um, Dr. Kofi, you are joining us uh, from Abidjan in Ivory Coast, and you are director of, or part of the national program uh, working against uh, in the fight against Beruli ulcer, and also with the Ministry of Health Ivory Coast. So, from all of us here at ICNTD. And all of our attendees, a very warm welcome to you today. Yes. Um, you, we invited you today. Uh, congratulations on the recent paper that came out. Uh, this is one of many papers that charts and outlines the burden of um, skin disease in West Africa, particularly Benin and Ivory Coast. Um, the work you have focused on recently is looking at particularly Beruli ulcer, leprosy, and yours, um, and with particular care in addressing how these um, skin conditions present themselves in communities, but also how communities are responding to them, talking about them, and also um, uh, any stigma associated with it. So a huge body of work here. Um, but today I will just hand over to you and um, let you talk us through a little bit more about your first-hand experiences in the management of these three skin NTDs. Yes, thank you. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. I would like uh, to share with you our experience in the integrated approach in the control of skin NTDs disease in Benin and Côte d'Ivoire. Uh, so now, as uh, you can see on the screen, so here is the team. We have uh, the author and the other co author who contribute. But we have online this afternoon, we have Dr. Kofi, who will uh, sometime contribute with me. So, as you know, Benin and Cote d'Ivoire are in West Africa. Benin population it is uh, 11 uh, billion inhabitants and the life expectancy it is uh, 61 years in Cote d'Ivoire the population it is uh, 25 million and the expected life is around 57 years and uh, on the I try to show on this map the location of Benin here and just we have a 
Côte d'Ivoire. Both countries, Benin and the Côte d'Ivoire, are endemic for several entities. But for this afternoon, we'll focus on uh, Borrelo ulcer, leprosy, yours, and uh, scabby. As you know, integration is uh, a WHO recommendation, and you have uh, two resolutions that support this recommendation. This integration approach was implemented in a several steps. Mainly, we have uh, three steps. We have for preparatory activity, integrating screening and uh, confirmation and management cases. Now, we are going firstly to talk about the preparatory activities. Firstly, we have performed in Benin in one district a pilot study. This study was published in a plus NTD in 2016. Taking into the court lesson learned from this pilot study, we have extended the integrated approach to other districts in Benin and in other countries such as Côte d'Ivoire. Here you have the data collection tool that we use for these activities. Before start, starting the activities, the team was training. So on this picture, we can see that it is the training of the health worker, doctors, nurse, laboratory lab technician, community volunteer, and the teachers. We have also briefed the chief of village and the opinion leaders. On this slide, you can see the topic that was focused the training. We have we were focused on virulent leprosy, yours, and the scabby. We talk about epidemiology, clinical activities, complication, social consequences, the management, and how to fill the integrated tool. Now, what the screening activities, we started this activity, this activity was carried out uh, in Benin and Côte d'Ivoire between uh, 2016 and uh, 2017 in the two countries. We have uh, a multidisciplinary team, you have uh, a medical team such as uh, a doctor, dermatologist, physician, nurse, lab technician, and a physiotherapist in the team. But also, we have non-medical non team, such as uh, village leader, community uh, volunteer, and uh, teachers. This is the illustration of sensitization, integrated sensitization in the village. And uh, on this side, we have the illustration of a consultation, integrated consultation. How case was confirmed and managed. For yours, the rapid test was performed, were performed for every seed and youngest than 15 years with any skin lesion. And for adults, we perform the rapid test only if they have a suspected lesion. If the rapid test, this first test is positive, now we make the next step of the confirmation with a DPP test. For Birulu ulcer, samples were, were collected and the cases were confirmed by PCR. For leprosy and scabies, it is only clinical examination. All skin disease as well as over, uh, all skin disease as well as uh, over skin condition were all managed or referred to the next hospital. So now we are going to share the key results, eh, as I thought previously. So on this slide, you can see that in Benin, 14,000 persons were screening, while in, in Côte d'Ivoire, it is more than 2,000 
person. The median age in Cote d'Ivoire was 13 years, while in Benin it is 15 years. In, in Benin, most of the cases were female as well as in Cote d'Ivoire. Now we are going to talk about the skin entity that we saw during these screening activities. In Benin, we saw 1,000. One in Benin, we saw 1,116 uh, cases of virulence. And in Cote d'Ivoire, we saw seven cases. For leprosy, it is we saw around 94 cases in Benin. This means around 0.7%, while in Côte d'Ivoire, we found 30 cases, it is around 1.30%. For us, it is in Benin, we saw 11 cases, while in Côte d'Ivoire, it is 15 cases was diagnosed. For scabies, in Benin, we saw 386 cases. In Côte d'Ivoire, we have 100 and 87 cases. In Benin, we saw some cases of LF. We saw 21 cases of LF and, in, uh, and two cases of uh, mycetoma. Uh, we don't check for these cases in Côte d'Ivoire. As you can see, we saw a lot of over skin condition. More than 19% of the cases patient come with over skin condition. And at the end, we saw some entity, not skin entities, such as urogenital cystomiasis in Benin. This we cannot, we don't check for these cases in Benin. Here I'm going to go with the characteristics of the cases that we saw in Benin, and later we are talking about the cases we saw in Côte d'Ivoire. So in Benin, about the virulence cases, the median age was 20 years, and the most of the cases are female. The category three, that is a late stage, is seen was seen only in uh, 33 cases, a percent of the cases. And we uh, here we can we try to map cases, eh? and you can see the most of the cases are in the soft of Benin, of the countries. For leprosy, you see that we have as well cases on the north and the south of the countries. The median age of the cases is 45 years. Female is less than the half of the cases, and the multi cases is the most of the cases. We do not see a degree two disability in children. On these slides, we try to zoom to, to make bigger the cases that was where cases were found in the north of the countries. And here it is the, the place where we found the leprosy cases in the south of the countries. What about, about yours? We saw 11 cases of yours, and the minimal age was four years, and the, the maximal age was. 17 years. Three out of 11 cases was, were female. Here we, I try to, to show some pictures of the cases. And uh, here we can, we can see the rapid test that is positive and also the DPP test for these cases. And uh, the case, your case was, we find this case, we found this case only in, in uh, one district here in the south of the country, as you can see on the map. What about scabies? We found during this integrated approach, almost 400 cases of uh, scabies, and uh, most of them are children. The median age was 11 years, and most of the cases, it is half, half we have uh, around 20, uh, 49% of the cases are female. Here it's uh, the picture of the typic typical cases of scabies. And this is the map of the cases 
Most of the cases are focused on the south of these countries. Now, during this integrated approach, we saw some students who come to with uh, to to the screen and they say that they don't have skin lesion, but their urine was red. So they come with with uh, this uh, the urine. We went to the lab to check, and it is uh, erogenital schistomiasis. And we, we were in this village, we found almost 100 of cases. The median age is seven years, and uh, most of the cases are mal. On this, on the right of this slide, you can see that it is a, in this village we found the cases, and all of them were treated. Now, what we, what we try to do, it is to make integrated mapping of the cases. And the, as you can see on this map, you see that the brutal cases are in the red on this map. And more bigger the red point is, more cases we found in this village. Every point is, of the, is one village. In uh, green, we have the leprosy cases. Scabies are yellow and the yours are green. Here it is a picture of uh, LF and uh, mycetoma cases that we found during this integrated approach. Now we are moving to Côte d'Ivoire to share with you our results. We found in Côte d'Ivoire 30 cases of leprosy, leprosy Nine cases were multibacillary, and the median age was 53 years. Most of the cases are female, and uh, degree two disability in children, we, we don't find the disability in children. For Brulee, we found seven cases, and the minimal age was five years, and the maximal age was 33 years. And Five patients was female. Category three, that means a late lesion. We found it in two cases. And the early lesion, category two, we find five cases. Here are some pictures. Here it is uh, edema, brutal ulcer edema. Here it is a small lesion. And this one it is uh, a big ulcer of uh, brutal ulcer. We found in Côte d'Ivoire 15 cases of yours. And uh, we eight were confirmed by rapid tests and the DPP, and uh, seven cases were down, were, were down clinically. The minimal, minimal age was three years, while the maximal age was 33 years. 10 out of 15 patients were female. On the picture, we have uh, some typical lesion of uh, a yours on this. Uh, young boy and this school boy also you can see some papilloma in Côte d'Ivoire too we, we found some scabies cases on the slide we see the, the typical lesion of scabies and we have found 187 cases the median age is is uh, 10 years as you can see most of the cases are children and female have uh, majority now to summarize this integrated approach help us in the early case detection and then reduction in the indirect cost this help us also to discover in benin the reemergence of yours because since 1980 we don't see cases of yours in benin during this approach, integ integrated approach, many skin ATDs were detected also. Brulee, leprosy, yours, KB, mycetoma, LF, but also other NTDs. But we saw a lot of other skin condition. What lesson that we learned from this approach? In Benin, to detect 160 cases of BU. 
94 cases of leprosy, 11 cases of yours, and uh, 386 cases of scabby, and only 21 cases of LF and two cases of mycetoma. You need to screen more than 14,000 persons in Côte d'Ivoire to detect seven cases of brulus and 30, 30 cases of leprosy, 15 cases of yours, and 100 case, 187 cases of scabby. We need to screen more than 2,000 persons. We saw a lot of over skin condition, and all of these cases were treated. We think that this approach is efficient since with the same resource we treat and we saw we manage over skin disease. It is ethical because all diseases were also managed and there is no exclusion. But we have etiology, eti, etiology diagnosis. It is difficult sometimes this means that you need to have a dermatologist in the team. To conclude, you think that integrated approach in skin entities, this contributes to optimize the screening and the case management. But the sensitivity of this approach, for the sensitivity of this approach, we need to train the health worker, not only on skin NTD, but also in uh, basic dermatology. But you need also the community engagement. They need to be involved in the wound care training. And we need to put the watch that it is a cross cutting issue in the management of the skin NTDs. Thank you for attention. And I would like to uh, thank all these partners who contribute in this integrated approach. Thank you. I don't know if you have some question. Absolutely, a big thank you to you, Dr. Barogi. Um, there's been a lot of questions. We have a chat function that uh, where people can post their questions and submit some comments. Uh, so without any further ado, I think I will uh, okay. uh, go to some of the questions that have been posed, Dr. Barrow, before you. So, um, you know, first of all, it's interesting to mention that in the attendees, we have a huge range of um, clinicians, researchers, people working at the particularly in integrated skin management uh, who've tuned in from all around the world. So that's really fantastic. Um, we are medical doctors studying um, uh, integrating case management of skin disease in north, central, and southwestern Nigeria. Uh, hello as well to Olawatusi Adekeye from working as well on a site savers and LSTM uh, project. Uh, hello, Shreen Chowdhury again, the LSTM Site Savers Project. Uh, Simo, bonjour, uh, and Jose Portigo from Geneva. So, big hello to absolutely everybody who's tuned in. Uh, so some hello. Some of the uh, questions we have here, um, I'd like to say hello as well to our friend Martin Coleman from CBM. And Martin was asking uh, in Cote d'Ivoire as well as in Benin, uh, how many children have had leprosy? And also quite a few kind of um, specific questions about the the extent of the illness and how many people in Benin and Cote d'Ivoire with really also have movement limitations. So, um, you know, those some of those figures that uh, Martin was uh, asking for. Perhaps we could put you in touch as well if, if there were more um, questions. Yes, for the study in Cote d'Ivoire, I think we don't find the children with a leprosy. Eh? University that we publish. There's no cases from children in these cases. If you have a, a publication on the table one, I think that uh, in these cases we don't we don't find the children in Cote d'Ivoire during this approach, integrated approach. 
Thank you. Yes. Um, brilliant. Moving on a, a little bit, um, question just looking, of course, we have to bring it back to COVID-19 because this is a, kind of a completely unprecedented a unique shock to so many uh, public health programs and work of this nature. So Anne-Marie Septic, hello as well, Anne-Marie, lovely to see you here. And Anne-Marie was saying, first of all, thank you. Um, a very interesting integrated community-based work. And in context of, COVID, of the COVID-19 pandemic, what implications do you see in evolving this work? Ah, we are talking about coronavirus and this, you know, uh, currently it is not possible for us to go in community, so it is not possible to to make uh, this screen uh, uh, integrated approach at this step now. So it is difficult. Maybe you can do. We, we are thinking how to do door to door activities, but it is not possible to make campaign activity as we did before. Right. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yes. So you're, I suppose, like all of us, just waiting, wait and see what the next steps yes. might be. Yes, we are waiting to know what right. so will be the next step after this pandemic. Hmm. A couple questions here, uh, one from Derek Robinson, and I'll also link it to a question from Lorette Lahr, uh, who are asking about some of the diseases that were not included in the study. Uh, so Lorette was asking, please, why was uh, LF, Mycetoma and UGS not checked in Cote d'Ivoire. Thank you. And Derek was also saying, excellent talk, thank you. I see that you have found a lot of skin NTDs, but trypanosomiasis infections induce skin symptoms. So why didn't you look for trypanosomiasis? You know, uh, I'll... Mm -hmm. Dr. Uh, Kofi, I want, want to... to... Yes, okay, go on. To... Okay. Uh, the difference of... Uh... The integration in Cote d'Ivoire is that in Benin, uh, integration take all uh, uh, entities. In Cote d'Ivoire, we can we target our integration uh, uh, on uh, management, cases. management cases only. Management cases. When we 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 go in the field to screening, we target our intervention on management cases only not on chemotherapy not, well. preventive cases we don't target uh, chemotherapy preventive cases other program are in charge of these cases we only target uh, the cases we can manage in our centers thank you um a question from shireen chowdhury and may I remind the attendees, if you don't mind, to include your affiliation at the start of your question. Unfortunately, our system doesn't display that, but it's always very interesting to, to know. Um, so please don't forget. So Shireen's asking and um, saying, thank you for this interesting presentation, a great case of integrated management. I just wanted to ask, um, how were training and screening tools developed for community health workers? Uh, she want to know exactly how the community health worker were trained. Yeah, or if you have specific tools or um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Usually we have a, a WHO tool for to train community health volunteer. We have some video and some uh, a booklet that we use for them. And on this booklet, we can see some picture who help them to suspect it, uh, to suspect cases. And uh, yes. if they, uh, if they suspect cases, they have a, 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 a they re record all the suspected cases, and after that, the the team, the medical team, went to the village for confirmation. So we have a tool, video, and the booklets to train them to help them to uh, suspect cases. Uh, I want to add something. Okay. Uh, 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 when we we do the, the training, the training uh, target uh, nurses and uh, volunteers, village volunteers. First time for 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 the first preparation of our screening, 
we 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 with with training target nurses and volunteers village village volunteers uh, a question from Xavier Badia. Yeah. Thank you for the presentation. And Thank will you. you scale this up to other districts in Côte d'Ivoire? Xavier was also asking if you were planning to integrate LF in Côte d'Ivoire, but I think you've answered that earlier on. Yes. <laughs> yes, surely uh, we can plan, but uh, when we, we go on the field to make a screening, when we found uh, uh, lymphatic filariasis cases, we notice them, but we refer them to the, the another control program. So we can notice just the number of cases we found, but we don't take care exactly of them. Because on the uh, integrated cases management, uh, we skin all the population, not ever the disease they have, but in the management of this disease, we try to refer some of the entities cases with usually never take care of them to other program but we can we do it uh district by district we have around 33 district endemic for bu and uh leprosy so on this district we can make uh take with cases management but we refer other cases to the other program uh in charge of these diseases brilliant <clears throat> Thank you. Um, we had a question here from Blessing Ziwa, who is just curious and wondering whether HIV altered the presentation and course of some of these diseases. So this is just moving outside of NTD uh, for a moment. If I understand the question, he wants to know if we check for HIV, it was human or... Yeah, or does the HIV alter the presentation of these diseases? Ah. Uh, for HIV, usually it is uh, when patient is in, in the hospital, we check for this, but it is not in the integrated approach. So it is only in the patient, patient in the hospital we can we try to do this test. We don't test them in the community. I don't know if, if exactly what he wants to know, but usually all patients that come to the hospital, we perform HIV tests for them. Before, after making counseling, something like this, but did not perform this test systematically as in an in a integrated approach in communities. No. Uh, Dr. Kofi, Dr. Barogi, you've had a lot of, the, actually spent a lot of effort really having a great dialogue with the communities uh, that are affected with which really shines through in your research and is, uh, um, you know, an, of immense benefit to all the uh, protocols you're putting into place. I, I think there was a particularly interesting paper where you were looking at the language used by different communities um, yeah. to describe their skin conditions. Um, and so uh, perhaps this question you would be able to give us a, some insight on here. Uh, Julia Dodorico? is asking, did you do any research about how affected people and patients and health workers experience the integrated case management? I'll put up the question here. Are traditional healers a source of care for affected people? And if yes, do you also collaborate with them for case detection? Hmm. Um. If I, we, we have, uh, we have performed one study on the health worker contribution in the Brulilisa. I can send you the link and you see how they contribute in Benin, for example. Uh, apart from this, you know, in Africa and uh, especially in Benin, the traditional healer have impact in the therapeutic itinerary of the patient. Usually, most of them went firstly to the traditional healer before coming to the hospital. Uh, at the beginning of, of the control of a BU, for example, more than the half of the cases went to the traditional healer before coming to the hospital. And they come to the hospital with a late disease. But 
uh, now we try to work uh, careful with some traditional healer and some of them refer earlier cases to the hospital. And so if you see in the, uh, you can read in the paper that, uh, that I told you, uh, contribution of, tri of community health volunteer in the viral ulcer control in Beni, for example, you can see that less than the half of the cases do not go to the traditional healer before coming to the hospital. So we think that slowly uh, the number of the cases of a patient who will go to traditional healer will reduce in the time. But we are not sure that right. we we'll stop all this. That's very interesting. And it, it uh, kind of leads on to a question here by Chandrakant Ravankar, who is asking, yeah. once active case search is over, um, Chandrakant was wondering, oh, sorry, my, the question just slid off the screen. Um, uh, Chandrakant was wondering whether community members were reporting voluntarily to health centers or health workers for yeah. skin and yeah, yeah, I think that uh, 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 my paper on uh, the contribution of uh, health volunteer it is a good paper. I'm sorry, but it is a good paper. And you can see that uh, in this, we make a nice table on this paper. We can see the percentage of uh, health reports of a patient, the percentage of a, a family member who reports a patient to the hospital, the, the number of cases reported by uh, uh, teachers and uh, over. So we, we, we have saw that some former patient contribute to refer patient to the hospital as well as the family member. This it is, uh, it is what we saw in this study. Excellent. Um, another question here uh, about another um, skin disease. Innocent Takugang is asking, even though tungiasis may not be labeled as an NTD, um, I guess it could be reported if found. Did the team find any? Some, case, some cases that are not skin NTD, you mean? Uh, specifically tungiasis. Hmm. We don't know this John. name in English. Maybe translate in French. What is the name of the uh, or name? um uh, let me try and I'm doing what everyone does. I'm just googling it. Um uh, malheureusement je ne connais pas le le mot en français. Um ça s'appelle également jiggers, donc uh, des, des petites mites qui um, qui s'installent dans sous la peau. Uh, so come later. Larva lesions. Je vais rechercher, right? I'm sorry, oh, innocent. We will uh, get back to you on that one. I need to practice my French. Diocese in French. <laughs> right. Um, well, we have here another question. Uh, more questions about um, traditional healers. Blessing Ziwa was commenting, um, should we should we include traditional healers? Is this something that you would see as someone that should be included into the integrated team or is their role kind of waning? What is your experience? With uh, traditional healer, we need to go very carefully with them. Eh? Uh, you need to go very carefully with them. And uh, with some of them, we have a good experience. With some of them, we, we don't have a good experience. So it, it, it is not possible to generalize what we are going to do. It is according to the, each country, each traditional area, we, we, we make this collaboration. Those ones who are very, uh, uh, who want really to, uh, to, to work with us, we, we collaborate with them. That we have someone who, who, who don't want to collaborate, so it's not possible to collaborate with them. So, yeah, in Cote uh, after this study, like is like a, a part of study, we have a, another study in which uh, personal healers are fully involved, they are used like uh, 
communicate help workers because uh, we cannot we like to use them to help us not to oppose it to their fines. We talk them that uh, maybe they could treat some patients, but this particular patient needs a uh, particular treatment like antibiotic and other things. So we beg them to refer us uh, this kind of diseases like uh, community of work volunteers, workers have to do. So we use them like community health workers, uh, not to, to, to miss patients, but it's not easy because they find that it's like they're losing money, they're losing material. Because when they have to treat patients, uh, patients have to pay them or give them uh, some materials. So it's not very easy to, for them to bring us their patients, but it's like a negotiation. Uh, we try to involve them so they think themselves like important because uh, Ministry of Health come to them to to negotiate with them so that most of the time they collaborate. But some are as Dr. Baruji said, some are a little bit uh, complicated. They don't want to collaborate. That's very interesting. Thank you. Um, a question here from Xavier Badia, who's asking: Are you planning to integrate hydrocell case finding with the, within the integrated management? Yes, you know, in Benin, for example, eh, we have a nice experience that I can share with you. We have another program who, uh, who manage these cases, but oh. they don't have a hospital in the manage for uh, the, uh, surgical management of these cases. But now, when they went in the, in the field and they, they have cases, they send them to the hospital in our hospital where we, we are managing bureau and over leprosy, for example, since we have theater room in there. So this year, for mm -hmm. example, we have several cases that was were managed in our hospital. Mm -hmm. So integrating it is not only in skilled entity in Benin, but also between a program. Uh, yeah. Here in Cote d'Ivoire, we are in touch with uh, the control program of of uh, lymphatic. So uh, first of all, when we found cases, as we say, we refer to them. For, for this particular uh, aspect, hydrocell, uh, we have a, a program together, uh, an integrated program, so that when we found hydrocell during our integrated uh, screening, we can bring them to our centers because we do surgery in our centers. So now, we, we're going to make integrations activity with this program to take care of hydrocell we found during the screening because they use only uh, chemotherapy. They don't use uh, surgery, but BU program, we use surgery. So now we, we have integrated uh, management together to take care of hydrocell during screening. Excellent. In the meantime, uh, it's been posted that Tungayasis in French is uh, Le Chic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, d'accord. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I learned something today. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Um, Linda Lehman here is asking, uh, saying, nice presentation in all skin ntds and other skin conditions of your study what percent had wounds that had to be managed okay. roughly um, around we, we don't have a data here but it is what um 60 percent of the cases Mm -hmm. uh, have the wounds. So, as you know, for leprosy, we have wounds. For burial, mm -hmm. we have wounds. Some, some cases of yours also, we have so, some wounds. So, I don't have the data here, but we have another study on which we are working now that will be published and we see that if we went to the village, how many cases with wounds we can see. But also on the paper from uh, Cote d'Ivoire, for example, on the table one, we have uh, cases without ulceration. A case with insulation. On this day, we can see that we have uh, with insulation, it is around uh, 20% uh, uh, in Cote d'Ivoire, for example. 
and uh, with that insulation, it is around uh, 18 percent. But the wound management, it is no, not only ILSA, because if you have some, uh, uh, I can see if you have some scabby, for example, you need to, uh, to use water with soap to manage this. And also the management of scare is integrated in the wound management. So I think that wound management in Benin, it is a more than the half of the cases. And as well as uh, the ulceration of the scar, we need to teach them how to manage the, their wounds. Mm. Um, Dr. Kofi, Dr. Barugi, you've um, had quite a lot of interest in your work. Mary, for example, from, is a master's student at LSHTM, and she is planning to do her summer project on lymphatic filariasis in Côte d'Ivoire, and was just wondering whether it would be possible to have your contact information as I suspect Mary, but also a lot of our attendees would like to keep in touch probably after this meeting. And uh, would it be okay if we share your, your, your contact details? I think, Dr. Barogi, your email is on the uh, published paper uh, yeah. as a correspondent author, but perhaps um, please definitely uh, keep us in the loop with Dr. Coffey as well. Of course. If that's okay with you, we'll share your, your contact details. One more question here from uh, Blessing, who was, uh, you know, looking a little bit beyond the health implications of skin NTDs, but have you also seen any studies or done any studies on the impact of the integrated approach uh, on, on, well, the economic impact of that integrated approach on the patients or things such as absenteeism at school? Mm, I think that at this step, eh? We don't uh, perform a study on economic impacts, so this may be the next step of, the, of this aspect. Uh, we don't evaluate the cause of uh, preparation, something like this. Uh, it is true that we have some over study on uh, one on uh, Brulus uh, who evaluates the socioeconomic aspect, but we don't evaluate in the integrated approach. Maybe the following mm -hmm. year we can we can perform this kind of study to have uh, a a, a good data that we can publish. Sure. And then again, another argument to strengthen the case for these integrated approaches. Um, we're coming up towards the end of our hour for to discuss this um, this topic, and I kind of wanted to take this opportunity to ask you, Dr. Kofi and Dr. Barogi, um, sort of looking forward now in terms of your next steps. What might be some gaps or some, you know, something on your wish list that you would like to see to facilitate your work or to kind of move on to the next stage. Um, I know we just discussed looking at economic impact, uh, but perhaps in terms of diagnostics or access to treatments or what would be, in your opinion, sort of some of the priorities in terms of skin management and integrated programs. I think that the next step will be to continue with our uh, integrating approach and also to evaluate the stigma in, uh, in the skin NTD, for example, the impact of, uh, uh, you know, to a psychosocial impact of NTD on the patients, for example, because mm -hmm. this aspect is not so proper. We don't, we don't we have few study on this aspect. So you need to, to work on this aspect and also to work uh, about the socioeconomic impact of uh, integrated approach, for example. That's very important. And um, also probably integrating this with mental health approaches, um, stigma, but also inclusion, disability um, management. So very important, definitely. Thank you. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you very much, Dr. Barogi. Thank you, Dr. Kofi. It's been a pleasure having you join us today. Ah, thank you. And uh, if you, you love me, I want also to thank uh, all partners who help us in the case management. Eh? We have several partners who help us uh, in the case management. Without them, it is not possible for us to manage cases and to make some research. Uh, if you, I can show all these partners on the screen, if you want, you can help me to, to share again my last screen, if you want to, 
thank all of them. C can you do it absolutely. for me, please? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I that think it's important. Yes. yes, because since it is a neglected tropical disease, patients don't have money. We want this partner, we have uh, Benin, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, WHO, and Eswad's Foundation, Ralph Folero Foundation, Ralph Folero France, USB Foundation, and uh, CIFRED ERSP. All these partners help us in the management. So it is, I take this occasion to thank all of them. Thank you very much for your great help. Thank you. Absolutely, that is yeah. definitely uh, important to highlight um, this fantastic multi-partner collaboration that has made. Yes. Well, I'm just going to. I'm going to move us to the other side so we can see the IRSP logo nice and clearly. Okay. I think we were blocking that before. I once again would like to thank you. Uh, very much, both of you. Dr. Kofi, did you have any final concluding um, words that you would like to share with us? Uh, it's just to say thank you uh, for this opportunity to give us to present our work. And we hope, as Dr. Baruji said, that we can move to another, to the next stage to, to, uh, to fulfill the, the, the work we started. And just to thanks all the partners who support us on this NTD's management. Thank you. Brilliant. And uh, lots of people in the uh, uh, attendees are joining me saying thank you, Dr. Eve and Dr. Coffey, for the excellent work on integrated skin NTDs. Um, uh, Linda Lehman saying enjoyed participating. Uh, Derek Robinson, thank you. We wish you all the best for this important and interesting life saving work. So I think we all rally behind that and wishing you all the best and we will definitely um, keep an eye out on your on your future steps. Okay. Thank you too for inviting yeah. us for this meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much for this meeting. You're welcome and thank you. And thanks for everyone who joined us today. Thank you and goodbye, goodbye everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.